Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another class show video. Thank you so much for joining in. And today, I'm going to go through seven of these tips which are going to help new Clash Royale players a lot. So, if you're a new Clash Royale player who's just joined in right now, these seven tips will make sure that you at least get to know the game better and don't do the common mistakes which a lot of people do. So, it's really important to know how to play Clash Royale rather than just playing it like any other normal dude will be playing. So, to get to know the mistakes a lot of people are doing, you need to make sure that you know how to overcome those. So I'll be giving you some of these tips which you shouldn't at any cost do in Clash Royale. Some of the things you should never do in Clash Royale. So there are going to be 7 tips you we'll probably go through. And if you're doing any of these, make sure you stop that right now because you are going to lose if you do any of these. So without wasting any of your time, let's get right into the video. But for that, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. If you do subscribe, make sure you click the bell notification icon. And... Uh, Let's get right into the video. So the first tip I like to give is to make a good deck. Now what I mean to what I mean by is doing a good deck is that you need to make sure that the average elixir cost. So there's a there's a concept called average elixir cost. So based on all the eight cards, it's gonna give you an average as to how much the uh, total deck is gonna cost. So I would say the average elixir cost should be within 4.5. Over 4.5, it's going to be really expensive. No matter if you have an elixir collector or not, it's going to be really expensive. So make sure you cut down the average elixir cost. You can see that right below the deck you have selected. So now make sure you give a check on that. It shouldn't be about 4.5 elixir. So there are certain kind of average elixir uh, costs that you need to keep in mind. So there are certain decks which actually have a, a general idea as to what the uh, uh, average elixir cost should be like. So for a cycle deck, a cycle deck is where you can actually put in a card and within the next few seconds you can actually get the same card itself so that's a deck which is really fast so if you drop it the next card can be dropped and then the next card we can drop and after that after a few seconds itself you're gonna get the card which you actually dropped in first so it's a really fast paced deck so that is a cycle deck so if you have that the average collection should be lower than three elixirs so these are basically all those cheap cards which have really cheap uh, average uh, really cheap elixir cost like the fire spread the ice spread or maybe the uh, uh what is that the ice golem all these kind of guys are in a cycle deck so now the next deck would be the bid down deck these are really expensive ones these are the ones which are really heavy these go in really slow by bid down i mean you have a tank that's the biggest win condition and you are actually going to get use that tank only when the two uh 2x elixir mark comes in that's when the uh, one minute mark has come so there's just one minute and you're gonna put in the golem or maybe a giant or something like that so that is a beat down deck where you actually are gonna put in a tank and then you're gonna build up a strategy out of it so these decks are really really costly these are really slow you can't actually do anything up in the very few seconds so these are really slow so in decks like these you actually have to have a 3.5 to 4.5 average elixir cost now then the next set of decks which are control decks so these are the decks which are going to be like uh, how you can actually counter the opponent. So these are basically like the defensive decks. So if the opponent has any card that he's actually put up on the arena, you probably will have a uh, counter for it. So that's really important in these kind of decks. Control decks are really where they actually are going to concentrate on countering the cards rather than attacking. So they just get the chip damage done and they probably are going to get the benefit out of, benefit out of it. So again in this, 3.5 to 4 elixir is the average elixir cost I would suggest. The next deck criteria is the Siege deck. So these are the decks which have defensive buildings which are going to stay on your side of the arena itself. There are two sides, the opponent side and you on your side. So these decks are going to have a defensive building on your side and they're going to do damage to the other side. So Mota, Expo, these are the cards which are really going to uh, stick up in the Siege deck. So average elixir should be uh, slightly below than the 3x elixir mark I guess. So it should be kind of near the 3, uh, three elixir mark. So average elixir the cost for seeds deck should be within the three elixir marks so after that we have the bait deck so these are the decks which are going to actually uh, understand the counter for your card and before the opponent actually puts in that card you're going to counter it so say you have a giant and the opponent is putting in skeleton army to counter that giant so you want to make sure that the opponent is going to drop in the skeleton army before you're dropping the giant and then you're going to take that entire skeleton army out and then you're going to put in the giant so these are bait decks we're actually going to bait the enemies uh no, uh, card and then you're gonna actually put in your win condition so these decks will have an el average elixir cost of three to four so these are something you need to keep in mind when you're actually making a really good deck so that's tip number one 
Going over to tip number two, it's really important to know your deck's strength and weakness. So it's not just building up the deck. Uh, uh, it's not just building up the deck. You need to understand what your deck is capable of, what the potential it's having, actually having. So. Just creating a deck wouldn't make any sense at all if you don't know what the deck is capable of. So, if you have a deck, say with Golem, and the opponent has a Minion Horde or maybe an Inferno Dragon, these are really good counters for the Golem. And if you don't have a counter for these Minion Horde or Inferno Dragon, so it's going to be a Electro Wizard for the Inferno Dragon and then a Wizard for maybe the Minion Horde, maybe Arrows for that. So if you don't have counters for these cards, it's definitely going to not make any sense at all. So you need to understand the strength and the weakness. So if you're having a Golem in your deck, you need to have a, a card which is actually going to do Area Splash and then also maybe some card to actually take that Inferno Dragon fast. So you need to understand the strength and the weakness of your deck before you actually move on now the next tip that's tip number two now coming to tip number three you need to understand that you need to make positive elixir trade now by positive elixir trade i mean you're gonna make more profit than what the opponent is actually doing so say if the opponent is dropping in uh the witch and then the execution which together are gonna make 10 elixir now if you have to drop in troops to defend that it's gonna cost a lot it's gonna get you easily somewhere near, near the 10 elixir mark so if you instead of going through like that you can just put it in a rocket to take these two guys that's gonna cost you six elixir versus the 10 elixir now this is not a perfect example but then i'm just giving you an idea if you don't have counters for the witch and the executioner together you can actually put in a rocket which is going to cost you six elixir rather than ten you're going to save up four more elixir that is really important you need to make sure that you're making it more profit than what the opponent is doing that is really important you need to understand that before you actually go in and play clash royale so tip number four would be to not overcommit. now by overcommit, i mean that you're not just going to put in all your troops dump all the troops over there in just one side and just go in so there may be chances that if the opponent has a combo which can counter your uh, push so you say you're putting in all the troops the giant a visit and then a minion horde and everything and the opponent have a really good counter for it so uh, say he has a rocket so that's pretty much gonna wipe out all of them just a little bit of uh, health remaining on the giant you just spend in so much elixir while the opponent just put in the rocket and he's pretty much done you can just put in maybe uh, just minions itself that's gonna clear out the giant itself so that is really important you need to make sure that that you're not overcommitting just don't put in all the troops on the same side the opponent can actually take down your cards you may be actually having a really good counter for that for your uh, deck combo or you might actually put in some fast pace cards so you say you're putting in the golem on the left side and the opponent is going to put in a bandit and then maybe a really good battle ram or something like that so that's going to pull out the tower more faster than what you're going to do so that is something you need to avoid so before you push in, make sure you're actually knowing what the opponent is going to do. Just don't go in and push in because there might be chances that the opponent can easily counter you. And the second one, you can actually put in maybe a fast paced card on the other side and go in and take that tower. So that wouldn't make any sense at all. So the next step, tip number five, would be to know the opponent's card. So you need to understand what the opponent is actually having. So uh, you need to analyze the first few seconds. You need to put in some cards and analyze what the opponent is having in order to understand his deck. If you can actually understand his deck, if you can actually uh, get to know the deck, what the opponent is having, you can actually understand your strength and the weakness. So if he if you actually have a giant and the opponent has a skeleton army, you definitely know that the skeleton army is going to be a big threat for the giant because they can actually take down the giant within no time. He has the Inferno Dragon again, that's going to be a big threat as well. So you need to understand, you need to analyze the first few seconds as to what the opponent is having. So the first few seconds, don't push in hard, just go in slow and understand what the deck, uh, opponent deck is having to offer you so that is really important now coming to tip number six this is kind of important and uh, which a lot of people don't do at all and that is to actually counter I mean bait out the counter for your win condition now by win condition I mean a card that is actually going to get that tower down for you a car which you can actually trust maybe a hog rider a giant these are the win conditions of balloon these are the win conditions that are really important now the opponent has a counter for your win condition so say you're putting in a giant the opponent has a skeleton army which is of course not a perfect counter but then it actually does the job so you don't actually put in any troop behind so if he is actually going to put it in the skeleton army this is actually gonna make uh take down that giant to be honest he's gonna take that take that giant down so what you need to do is you actually have to pull that skeleton army before you actually put in the giant the next time 
So the next time you're gonna put in the giant, before that you actually have to make sure that the operator is gonna put in the skeleton army just for some other troop, it's not gonna be your giant. So some other troop in your deck, so say uh, he's gonna drop in, uh, we're gonna drop in a visit and then the opponent has to drop in the skeleton army. You have to make sure that the opponent is gonna drop in the skeleton army. You're gonna remove all of those skeletons out and then you're gonna put in the giant. So that is what I mean by baiting out the counter that the opponent has to your baiting condition. So this is really important you guys, you need to understand this. If you, uh, if the Hobbit has a perfect uh, uh, counter for your win condition, it's just gonna be there, just like that. It's never gonna move at all. So you need to make sure that the opponent uh, counter for your win condition is being taken at first, and then you drop in the win condition. That is the giant. So you need to make sure you're taking down the skeleton army first, and then you're gonna put in the giant. That's all I mean by that. Now the last tip, tip number seven, and this is kind of funny as well because now once you lose you're gonna just get discouraged and you're gonna leave the game out so you need to understand that this game is kind of made out in this funny way where you're actually gonna get angry at some point in time I've seen these videos which are really funny because they actually lose a really close battle because they don't expect the card to do that and they actually did that the opponent they're actually putting in their card the card doesn't do what they are supposed what they think it should do it doesn't do that they're really really angry at them they just throw their phones at so that was really funny to watch, but then it's really sad on the other side as well. So uh, these are some things that a lot of people do. If you're actually playing this game out, you definitely will come into conditions where you're gonna really get stressed out. You're really gonna be in a position to throw out your phone. Just don't do that. Just uh, relax and just leave the game for a few seconds. That's just something you need to keep in mind. Just don't get discouraged. Just to, just don't get angry at something and just leave the game. It's a really cool game. You can just uh, leave the game out, you can just chill out for a few seconds and that should be perfectly fine as well. So don't uninstall the game as soon as you lose a battle, that's the part of the game how this actually is going to work. So uh, another thing which a lot of people actually are doing when the uh, initially install Clash Rail is, first of all they're going to spawn, uh, just spam all the troops. That is something you actually don't have to do, it isn't really necessary at all, it doesn't actually make any sense if he actually has a visit it's actually going to take all these spam cards in no time so that is something you shouldn't be doing at any cost the next thing is wasting elixir on doing the same thing you can actually uh, put in a fireball putting in a tornado it doesn't make any sense so make sure you're not wasting up a lot of elixir that is not good and then the other tip would be other mistake which a lot of people do is just putting in the tank alone a lot of people up in the lower arena just just leave the golem alone just uh, leave the giant all by himself. He's not gonna do anything much unless you put in a uh, a guy behind the giant or maybe a golem. That is something really good that you need to understand. Just don't put in a uh, giant or a golem. It's not gonna do anything at all. And uh, another another thing is you don't have to put in your support troop in front of the tank. So uh, you're actually having a visit and then the giant. So the giant should be the first guy that should be going in but then if you're putting in the vision in front of the giant then definitely the vision is going to go down so that isn't a good way to play clash rail you need to understand that the giant has to be first and then comes the visit don't make sure you club these two together because again if the hobbit has an air splash unit then definitely these two are going to go down as well so yeah these are the tips i'll give you guys if you are new in clash rail something that i highly recommend you guys follow don't do any of these seven tips that I've actually told you. Make sure you understand these seven tips and master on these, and definitely you can get the victory on your side. So it's a really cool, uh, really cool seven tips I like to give you. Make sure you give this a uh, thinking on. And yeah, thank you so much for watching Tilbury, and I'm Aris, and I'll be seeing you next time on the land. Goodbye.